Hello, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Things are fantastic, actually. Super good. I'm 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 loving like the the blue couch is just nicely draped behind you. Uh, you know, so as as of when we're recording this now, it's uh, a little ways after the Jolt conference. So for those, it's not everybody got to see you. I I, I guess I could say because you said it, like you trolling me on Twitter of like <laughs> documenting the journey of the blue couch to the Jolt conference from Sappy Kraken, and then like being on the couch with other people coming up to you, sitting with you on the couch and then like taking pictures and saying, why isn't Michael here at the conference? Because I was unfortunately <laughs> conflicted out with another one uh, and like a steady stream of this for several days. So I'm, I'm glad to see the, <laughs> the couch made it home because for those who hadn't looked like really it's worth going back to Carl's Twitter feed to, to find it. Like there are multiple pictures of the couch making the jerk like making the drive across the midwest and like some people take pictures <laughs> when you move the gnome around like the journey of the gnome carl did the journey of the blue couch all, yeah. all the way to the conference it was it was pretty amazing so i'm, I'm glad really to see it made it back because we saw all the pictures going there but there were no yeah. pictures coming home so it it made it back safely yeah that was it, it made it back it was so fun the drive between Salt Lake in Las Vegas is some beautiful, super varied, but beautiful landscape. So I was like, why not stop and put the blue couch out in the middle of the landscape? I did. It was pretty funny. Like everywhere I stopped, I was like, you know, I felt really strange, like putting a couch out in the middle. I tried to find a field full of cattle. That was my main goal was to find a field full of cows that I could put the blue couch in the middle and sit on it and take a picture with the cows. But I never pulled that off. So anyway, yes, it did make it back. That was a super fun event. And it's finally here in the office with everything from London has finally arrived. So, so, so is this a, like, is this a thing now? Like just, if we see you out at conferences going forward, like should, should people who are listening expect to see the blue couch with you when you're at conferences in the future? Is this a like thing now? I like a, an in-person thing? I can't talk much about it, but at least in the fall, the blue couch is going to be some very, very interesting places. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I still, I, I do have to check in, like, how's your wife with this? Because we all know yeah. technically it's her couch. It's not your couch. Like she's the designer and it's a genuinely cool designer. Whatever. It's got a name. Couch. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. How, so how's she with the evolution of the blue couch? I don't know if we mentioned it, but when she found out it was going to Vegas to a conference with hundreds of people that were going to sit on it, she was like, that couch is not coming back. <laughs> so, so I've got to, I've got to buy her a new couch. So it's fine in my studio here in my office. Okay. It, 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 I've got to buy her a new one now. So that's, we're, we're so just we're, the next event, like the couch needs an appearance fee to cover its <laughs> siblings. <laughs> For that sure. need to cover for it back at back home for sure for sure super fun so i so you for our discussion today speaking of like uh, you know, entertaining conversations on twitter uh like you had put out this comment or actually li like literally earlier today as as we're recording this that it stirred up this interesting conversation that you had said, and like, I correct me if I don't if I don't get the 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 quote right, but some of the effect of don't think about goals, just focus on the general direction. Yeah, like yeah. to capture the essence of of that. Yeah, totally. I think I think that's exact. I don't recall exactly what it said. Okay. I don't have but that that might be word for word. Don't don't you know, or or maybe like stop thinking about goals and start thinking about general direction. So. Like we're goal setting machines, <laughs> financial planner. Like goals are what we do. So, <laughs> like, just talk about this more. Like, goals are what we do. So, like, help me reconcile. Yeah. Stop thinking about goals when, like, literally the first step of the financial planning process, well, after establish the relationship, is like identify the goals. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, look, I think anything we can do to suggest to the mind and to the client and their mind that goals are guesses 
anything we can do to lower that pressure around like what's your goals like i er, whenever you ask anybody that now we have all forgotten because and i believe you even have some survey research to prove this out but we have all forgotten that most people don't like talking about goals they don't they don't have them and, and the re, the research i believe you have is the reason we've forgotten is because we love it right but most people yeah. most humans don't partially because two things Number one, and this is also research, right? Number one, they don't know what their goals are. And number two, every time they think about goals, there's this big problem that comes up. And the big problem is we, we're mimetic machines. We don't know what our goals are. We don't know what to desire. Luke Brajot's work, his, his new book called Wanting, um, which really piggybacks off the work of Rene Girard around mimetic desire, really lays this out clearly. Like from the youngest age, we don't know what we want. We look to others to see what we want, right? We look to right. mom, we look to dad, we look right. to the people around us. As we grow, we look to the tribe and we look to the kids around us and peer pressure. And so, so that's the, that's the a, label of mimetic desire. It's like we, we don't have desire. We mime the desires of others. That's, that's exactly right. the root of it. And I, and I think, and I think that's what plays into this pressure around goals because you add Instagram to it and suddenly you're like, you don't even, so we all know this. Like when you say to a client, what are their goals? The first round of that is like, you know, I need $3 million when I retire. And you ask one question, like why? And they're like, oh, I read that in a book. You know what I mean? Like there's, and that's just what we do as humans. So I think back to this particular thing is like, look, goals to me, a really good goal. And I realized I've never really had them. And it would be fun to talk about that because I think you feel the same way. And we could talk about the book and, and working with Penguin would be my favorite story when we get to it. But a good goal to me is still important because it provides two things, a sense of direction I'm going that way. Yep. Right? Like there's a stake in the ground. I'm going to head that way. But I, it's just a strong opinion loosely held. I know it's going to move. Right. So a sense of direction. And number two, it provides gravitational pull. So I sort of like that idea. I love the idea of like, oh, interesting. Things are starting to show up in my life that because I'm looking for a red car, I'm starting to see yeah. lots of red cars. And I, I, I love... I love that idea. So that's how I think about goals. Now, one last thing, and then I'll be quiet for a minute, is um, this form of, I think most of the work we do, and particularly this form of thinking about goals, requires you to believe two things at the same time, two competing facts at the same time. One, that goal is really important. I'm going to get there. I'm committed to it. Yeah. And at the same time, I got to believe I'm totally open to changing it. I know it's actually not going to be the goal. And it's just a strong opinion loosely held. And we can believe both of those things at the same time. So that, that's how I think about goals. That's what sparked that tweet. So I, so I, would, like, I was really struck by this or just personally when you, when you had made the statement. And so you know, I was sort of thinking of it through three, three lenses. One, just there's a whole weird thing. I mean, just literally like our financial planning process, like, you know, the acronym is CGAD PIM. The second letter is the G, the G stands for goals. Like the whole thing is like, understand their circumstances, determine their goals. So if you're going to take my goals away, there's like a record scratch moment on financial planning. And I want to, I want to come back to that in a moment. But the, so the second thing that was bouncing around in my head as you were, as you had put that statement out was, so you'd alluded to this earlier, but we, we did a study last year on advisor well-being uh like yeah you know what makes us feel happy and fulfilled and have positive emotions and not negative emotions and there's there's really interesting work and research in the psychology realm of just what well-being is how you actually measure that in uh, uh in people and so when we did our well-being study like we literally used one of the measures to do that, it's called the comprehensive inventory of thriving. It's been you know, very well academically vetted. It, it, it assesses well-being across 18 different dimensions of like positive emotions and negative emotions and like our feelings of control and autonomy and learning and all this different stuff. And, and so we, we, we put advisors through this as part of the questionnaire. 
uh, as part of the survey that we did. And one of the striking things that we found in, in our results was that uh, there were two dimensions that advisors were just, as advisors, were off the charts different mm. than the average person, like the average general population. The first was we are just like astronomically high on the dimension of uh, accomplishments and pursuing goals. And we are extremely high on self-efficacy, which is essentially the, the personal belief that we can achieve our goals. And so in essence, like what, what the research would essentially say is like, forget all the goals-based financial planning. Financial planners, like the people who choose to do financial planning are basically, we are goal-setting machines who love setting goals and achieving them and feel really good about achieving them and are confident we can achieve them, which helps to make sure that we consistently achieve our goals. And, you know, frankly, like at that point, I'm like, well, then maybe we really just become financial planners because we're so obsessed with setting goals and, and achieving them and it feels so good. We just want to help everybody else do the same thing. Like, it's awesome to set goals and achieve them. Let's all do it together. Uh, with the interesting asterisk that we score off the charts on this relative to the average person. So we are actually, we as advisors appear to be way more goal oriented, like just empirically, the average advisor is way more goal oriented than the average client that we're, that we're working with. So, mm -hmm. you know, we are wired for goals, which means when you start saying things like stop thinking about goals and start thinking about the general direction, you kind of mess with us as advisors, <laughs> like now right. you're quaking a little bit of my foundation, or at least my foundation as the average advisor, because the other thing that struck me when you had put this comment out, and like, I don't, I don't think we've ever talked about this uh, before, but uh, like, I actually have this strong view, like I, I, for sort of personal goals, achievement, planning, uh, like I am very, I, I would almost go so far as to say anti-goal setting. Uh, and and mm. I'd actually written about this on, God, on the blog, like 10, 12 plus years ago, back when they were like really short blog posts. Uh, back in the <laughs> old dark happened? days. What happened to those days? I don't know. I found more time <laughs> and it got longer. Uh, and... You found and, less time. Sorry for the long po blog yes, post. I didn't have time for a shorter one. That's actually very true. That's actually got, very true. You got I busier, more, so it I got had longer. more time to edit them. Uh, and and the whole thrust of the post was essentially like why I don't set goals. I well, like I for, just let me interrupt for you for half a second because I remember hearing you mention this. At, this is exactly where I wanted to go because I remember yeah. hearing you mention it. So tell us what in the world is that all about? You just went through all this. We're goal setting machines. Yeah. We love goal setting. Whether you've shaken the foundation, and then well, here I, you drop this thing that you don't set goals yourself. What are you talking about? Well, so first of all, I've accepted that I'm sometimes different than other people. So <laughs> <laughs> moment, moment to own that because uh, yeah, like I, I clearly don't line up with the rest of our research on on advisors. So I'll 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 own that I'm 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 a strange case. Uh, but yeah, I like I I don't set goals, and I very consciously don't don't set goals. And I was struck even as I went back and like looked at this because I, I wrote it ten plus years ago, and I write like I find it even more true today than what I was writing and thinking about then. But but here is the here is the essence of it. Um, you know, we are not very good at predicting change in our lives. Right. It's part of why it's like setting things like retirement goals are really hard until you're basically all right up on retirement because it, it changes so much. And so I was writing this article back almost 10 years ago. And at the time I was 10 years in my career. So like I was looking back on, wow, a little over 10 years ago, I graduated from college back in 2000. And then here I am at the end of 2010, sort of looking back on the first 10 years of my career and doing this like holy blank of just like how far it had gone. I mean, even by then, like I'd spent some time as an insurance agent. I'd lived in the independent broker dealer world. I'd been a pair planner. I'd been a, a, a client service manager. i had been director of financial planning. I delivered a bajillion hundreds and hundreds of plans in a big growth phase for a firm. I'd already taken the leap to start the kids.com platform. Like I'd had like 
I'd, I'd written my first book. Like I'd had like four or five different like major career like iterations, progressions already that just, I wouldn't have possibly dreamt of when I was graduating from college. So like, yeah, here's my goals after the first 10 years after college. Like I'm going to be in a fast growth firm of an opportunity to make partner. Um, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to launch my own independent business. Like said, said me never as a 22 year old, like couldn't have dreamed of where it was going to all grow and compound because it, it grew quickly. Just like I, you know, I was in the right place at the right time for the industry. I happened to show up with a good skill set. I had some very fast compounding growth to my career early on and, and kind of had this realization. And I, and I felt a version of this even doing planning and delivering plans to clients that like the human brain is so bad at compounding. We just don't like, we just don't know how to wrap our heads around compounding. The numbers get so big in the out years of anything that compounds. Like you just can't really grasp how big numbers get. I mean, whether it's like compounding a business, compounding a career, compounding a portfolio, uh, like just compounding life, you know, the iterative changes add up to so much when they compound, you can't really wrap your head around it in the, in the early stages. And what it struck me was, if I had ever set a goal at any point in, my, in the first 10 years of my career, there's no way it would have been what happened. Like I would never have set it right. that far out. It would have seemed comical at, at the time. And if I had tried, like I know what would have happened. I would have set the goal. I would have gotten to the goal. I would have like patted myself on the back, like I got my goal. And then I would like, I would have taken my foot off the gas. Like I would have chilled out. Like I accomplished it. Like once you accomplish this goal, either you got to come up with a new goal, which is sort of hard, or you kind of hang out with the goal that you've achieved. And then it never would have gone as far as it did. And so like I, I'd had this realization that I guess as I would frame it, like goals are incompatible with things that compound. Okay. It's fine for short term. Like I want to lose some weight here's what I'm going to do. And like, you know, I'm going to eat healthier and I'm going to do this exercise routine. I'm going to do this stuff and I'll see how I'm doing in a couple of weeks and a couple of months. And I can measure my incremental progress. Like there's a level of short-termness that's like, I, I think goal, goals can be helpful to just define really concrete short-term action plans. But long, like the longer the time, the less interested I find I am in, in trying to set any kind of goal because like the goals are just not compatible with things that compound and, and like finances compound businesses compound life compounds and goal setting to me just doesn't, doesn't work with them except to the point that you had made, which is if you don't have a direction, the goal helps to set the direction. And I've happened to be, I think pretty good at just, knowing the general direction I want to go. And I just keep marching that direction and we see what happens as it compounds. But I do get like, if you're not sure on the direction, the goal can help create some clarity around the direction. And that's about it for me. It's so, look, there's so much to unpack there. And I think we should record another episode around, around, humans live in a complex adaptive system, but we pretend we live in a simple system. So to me, if you understand that, which I think we need to unpack in, a, in an episode by itself, um, if you understand that, then you'll understand the statement that I, I actually believe goals, because we're certainty, not only are we goal seeking machines as financial planners, as humans, we're certainty seeking machines. And Certainty is something that we love. It's easy to sell because everybody wants it. It's, but the reality is it's impossible to deliver. And so I think goals are the trick that ambition, ambitious humans use to deal with uncertainty, right? Like, because they're a joke. It doesn't, it doesn't have, like, and you don't, you don't, like we all know this and we keep playing the game. The reason we keep playing the game is we want to believe we're in a simple system. If you do A, you understand the process and you get B. That's what we think we live in. 
The reality is we live in a, comp a complex system bordering on chaos. And in a complex system, you do a, you don't understand what happens. And in fact, even with the benefit of hindsight, you have no explanatory power. All you're left with well, is, is myth and legend. Well, okay, Carl, but like, then I, then like I, I channel what, what piece of goal setting there is for me. And I'm like, the, I, I mean, I guess it is what it is if it's reality, but like the, 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 the picture you're painting sounds awful to me as a, no, it's, as someone that wants to set goals, it's just like, yeah, don't really bother with goals. Like life is chaos and things are going to happen. Like I need more than that. No, I, well, I remember need... what we, but you got to remember what we said at the beginning of the, of the thing. It's chaos. Don't bother setting goals. And you need to set goals. And the reason you need to set goals is it gives us a sense of direction. That would be like saying to a pilot, like, you're, you know, every single pilot I've ever flown with, I've asked the question, do, two questions. Number one, do you make, the commercial pilots, do you make a detailed flight plan before every flight? And the answer is always yes. I do remember one exception, but he wasn't a commercial pilot and I would never fly with him. Do you make a detailed flight plan after, before every flight? Yes. Question number two, how often does the flight go according to plan? Answer always, never. All right, well, now I just got to ask like, you literally pop your head in the cockpit and ask this no, question. No, 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 no. This flight. is like when you run into a friend. Not okay. every flight. I'm saying every pilot I've ever flown. I thought you said probably, every flight. I'm like, no, you no, really no, just no. do like a pilot. Because I can totally see that. <laughs> like you just well, do I a could, pilot. I could do that. I, well, I'm that's why you pilot. drive. That's why you drive now. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I've been outlawed. I've been rule outlawed. No, too many cockpit. Every, too many cockpit. Of, there's actually uh, a bunch of pilots that live in Park City because of the Delta hub. And I've had this conversation at least a hundred times. The point is... Does that mean you shouldn't make a flight plan? Because it never, no. So goals are a joke. They never work. You don't even set them. They're such a joke that you don't even set them. And you need to have goals because it gives you a sense of direction. It provides framework for humans. Humans need some certainty, especially in the well, work we do. Hey, we're headed this direction. Because I'm the same way. I would have never dared. I do set goals, but I would have never dared set the goals I've hit. Like I would, it never would have occurred well, to me to write, write a book for Penguin. Oh, really? You would have set a goal like that? No. Well, but well, but that's the. I mean, I guess that's still the interesting piece to to me. Like I, I mean, I sort of you're like you know, I don't set goals yet. Yes, set goals for for general direction. Except I'll say on my end, like I I don't I don't set goals for general direction, and and part of that is just like I've I've got a sense of direction. Just like I I've are for whatever re re reason is I don't know if that's how my. I don't my even brain know that is I believe, but I don't know that I believe you. Okay. Because here, 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 here's why. I've had conversations with you with, and you've said, we, oh, for instance, well, I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I can think of a conversation we had recently about a direction you want to take the business. We'd like to do more courses, yep. for example. But I like, I, I don't know. Maybe a, you just call that a, maybe, maybe like. Well, but that's a direction. That's you. That's an intention. That's that's like we'd like well, to. Do it's more. a direction, right? Like I, you know, I see a gap around you know the kinds of training that we have as advisors. No one really teaches us how to do the things. Like we learn the book knowledge, right? Like you know, you learned about taxes in CFP class, and then you're supposed to class your client's tax return, and no one actually shows you like how do you walk through the tax return? Like which lines do you actually look at, and how do you map that back to what you learned in in tax sure. class? So like, so we made a course for that. And, and I see a lot of gaps like that. And I believe there's a market, let's, let's, and I think there's a market opportunity wait. to do that. But like, I'm not let's, sitting down saying my goal is to have a library of 50 courses and we're going to sell this many courses. We're going to have this many advisors. Like I just see a need for teaching advisors and it's not happening. So we made a course, then we made a second and now we're working on the third and if a lot of advisors show up, we'll hire a lot more people. And if a few advisors show up, we'll handle, we'll hire a few more people. And some people would call that a goal, but let me just ask you real quickly. But there's no when, number. When, like, so, I, so literally, literally there is no, because I, I know some of the people you work with coaching wise, and most of them would suggest, oh, what do you mean? You don't have some big, huge, giant revenue number goal? You don't have a revenue goal. No, I mean, there's, there's a very... There's some very light, I guess I would call like milestone measurements 
over the next over the next year or two just because at some point from the pure business end like we have 21 team members like i need to make sure i can support like their salaries and their raises and like that the economics work that like if we do this many courses i need to hire this many people let's just make sure the like the math works i mean there's a little bit of just short to intermediate term business tactical measurements that just i do have to do because i you know take the responsibilities employer very seriously about like team team job security but like there's there's no goal of number of courses and number of people and how far i'll go like if a whole bunch of people do it we're going to do more and we'll do it faster and if some people like it we'll continue to do some and we'll 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 go where the opportunities are because like i don't know at the end of the day if you know 10 years from now we could be doing courses for 200 advisors or or 50,000 i have no idea i mean i never would have thought when i started writing a blog for the couple of friends i had 10 years ago that it would turn into like hundreds of thousands of people every month coming to uh, read it like never never would have dreamt it wouldn't have even tried yeah no i and i can this is where we're so like i've got the direction there's a gap for courses i think we can do something there if uh you know the more that show up and compound the more that we'll do like i do know how to you know follow the business when you know demand comes as a as a business but i don't like i don't set i don't set a goal for this because i'm afraid any goal i would set if i come up short it'll feel bad and if it comes out better i'm probably just going to undershoot uh, this is fascinating to me because this is exactly like we literally had our strategy session on uh, yesterday with the team. I we anyway, long story, but we only meet once every six weeks, and um, and I'm not allowed to talk to them in between, which is just there's a whole story behind that. But we sat down and talked about like we don't set goals either because it, what what does that even mean? Like I, we've set goals before, and we blew them out of the water. We felt great, or we didn't hit them. We felt stupid. And we've, we were like, well, where, where did we even pick that goal from? Like it was an arbitrary. Well, interesting well yeah, I mean, it cuts so, both ways. Like, you know, we've had things we tried and didn't work out. Like, you know, the cool thing about not setting goals, like did you feel bad when it didn't work out? Like try to think so, that wasn't so popular. Let's just move on to the next thing. But that brings, that brings us to like, okay, so functionally, where do you place the focus? If it's not on goals, to me, you functionally place the, you place it on what I think of as reality-based planning, which is, well, let me get really clear about where I am today. Let me make some guess about the direction I'd like to head. And then I'll back up and say, what's the next local optimum? What's the next yes. step? As I take that step, new information will show up. That new information will inform where that stake is way out there in the distance, yeah. the goal. And as that new information shows up, I can fine tune my goal. So the goal is fine tuned. And we, we talked about this in another episode we mentioned, goal clarification over time. Yeah. And I, following tailwind, which is what you're saying. Like I, we, we try a thing. Yep. And if tailwind shows up in the form of resources, demand, energy, people, then we try it again. So, so help me translate it back now. So I'm still thinking about this in two domains. It's, it's one thing in the in the advisor context right and i think to me just you know i think i hope there's a takeaway for some around you getting a sense of just the direction that you want to compound your your business your career your life is more important than setting the long term goal around it because that just gives you the opportunity to compound and just f- go go with the flow of what's working of what's working for you. You know, I, again, you know, the the origin of the blog was not a whole lot more than there's really no one else out there that just kind of blogs on financial planning things. Like, there's no financial planning blogger dude or dudette. So, like, I'm gonna be financial planning blogger dude. Like, that was about the extent of it when the when the blog launched and when people showed up, we did more because it was working. So, why would you not do more of the thing that's working? But I had a clear sense of direction, which was there's this gap where no one's doing this thing. I'm going to start doing this thing and see if people like the thing. And if they like it, I'll do more of it. But I I, like I I, I had the sense of direction. It just it reminds me of the conversation we had on on this podcast a couple of months ago around the challenge. I know a lot of us have as advisors, like 
you set the goal and you get the goal. And it's like, well, what next? Because we're so goal oriented. You know, if you're a goal oriented machine, you always have to have a goal and no one sets backward goals. You have to always have set forward goals. And so then we get stuck on this treadmill of, well, the only direction is growth, 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 growth. Because if you're not growing, you're, you're dying. And if you set goals, you clearly want a growth goal, not a death goal. So like we get, we get stuck on this treadmill of setting ever escalating goals, unless you create a new goal for yourself. So I, I like, I see it on the advisor end, but you know, with limited time, like I actually want to bring this back for a moment and hear your thoughts about how do you do this to the client's end? Like, it's one thing for an advisor to say, like, look, if you've if you decide you want to go after doctors and like that's gonna be your thing, cool. Just go after doctors. You don't have to set the giant goal of we're gonna serve you know, 10,000 doctors doing this and that. Like, just start showing up being awesome for doctors and see where your business grows and compounds. But when we get to the client end, if only because like I'm a financial advisor trying to create value, like here's my financial plan. I don't know what's going to happen, what the future is. Let's just do something and we'll see what happens. Doesn't feel very planning-y when I'm going to charge them a fee. So how does this show up with the clients? Like, what, or I, I guess I should even take a step back. Like this whole stop thinking about goals and start thinking about general direction. Was that for us as advisors or do you envision that as a client? philosophy i i literally think it's almost look we'll use different words but it's literally the same thing okay it be and all i all i mean is look and i've written about this a bunch like goals or guesses and and look we can still there's some theater to the art part of our business right like it, it, people what i mean the easy example about the theater would be I know listeners will relate to this, uh, especially if you serve a, a, a niche, as you would say. Um, if you serve doctors, let's say you serve architects that own their own firm. After you've met with and interviewed 10 of them, you know what the 11th is going to say. Yeah. You know, in the first 30 seconds, you can diagnose in the first three minutes of an hour long meeting, you can diagnose, you know, a few key things. How long have they been there? How many employees? Like, boom, you know. But the theater of what we do, this is just an easy example. The theater of the art of financial planning is you can't prescribe right then because they need to feel thoroughly diagnosed. Yeah. Goals are very similar. Like we may know that like we may in our heads even be thinking, oh, that's cute that they think they know they need $2.7 million and that they're going to vacation here. They're going to do this. And in our heads, we might be thinking, oh, that's cute. We may also be more generously. We may be thinking maybe, but we may not say that. We may say, oh, that sounds like a really good goal. And we may write that down because it gives them a sense of direction. And when we ask about goals, the best way to ask about goals is coming out of statement of purpose, out of values, right? Like the goals flow out of that. But if we just, if we just demonstrate to them that the two things, this is really important. We're really committed to getting there. And we know this is a journey and a process. And in fact, it's such a journey that not only the landscape's going to shift, inflation is not going to be what we thought, for example, returns are going to be a little different. Your inheritance may or may not come your goal may also change. And we've all seen this. Anybody who has a client that's retired, you sell anybody who has an entrepreneur client that sold a business so, and tried to retire, they know that those goals are going to change. So I, I, I hear you. I think the part I'm struggling with is like, what's the, so what's the general direction? I mean, I get it like as a business, right? Just here's a segment we're served. We're just going to show up awesome for them, serve the people we serve, get more of them and see where the business compounds, right? Like you can do that with a business. I feel like life shorter shows up that way. A, I can do that with the portfolio, but like, how does that show up in financial planning? Like just how does that work? Like a, what's my like, general direction? I'm going to get older and try to increase my wealth and then I'll just have choices later. No, no, no. Let me, let's, let's use, let's use somebody who's just getting ready to retire. Like I'll use a specific example that I literally just had this conversation with somebody. This happens a lot where I live. People successful, they move here, venture capital, uh, you know, private equity, entrepreneur people, okay. they have a liquidity event, they move here. 
And I get this phone call or email from the work I did at the Times where people are like, hey, I'd love to chat with you. We go chat. And it's almost always the same conversation. So let's just use an example, real financial planning example. Um, you know, we asked like, look, you, your, your business. Okay, so a friend of mine, I got to change the name. A friend of mine named Steve recently sold his second venture backed business. This is like airplane money, right? Steve okay. is like, what do I do now? So this is a common question. You could replace retirement. Like I'm, I'm about yep. to retire. What do I do now? Well, what do we do? Well, let's get a sense of direction. So to Steve, I would say, well, geez, what have you thought of? Like, what, what, okay. like do, do you have any goals? Like, what would you like to do? So we start clarifying the goal from really wide. That, you know, like there's this huge range of potential options. We never, oh, gosh, you know, I've always, you know what I'd love to do maybe is go back and, and, and teach at the university. I'd love to, or be maybe involved as a mentor. Oh, that's interesting. And, and, and I mean, let me just go one step further. I know we've done a long time, but I think this is valuable. Like, let's pretend like somebody says, I have no idea. Well, here's some hints on I have no idea. What have you always wanted to do? What do you see other people do? And you're like, oh man, I'd love to do that. What magazines do you subscribe to? I found that to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. What blogs do you read? What podcasts do you? So somebody says, gosh, I really love, I've always loved um, uh, winter sports. Well, that, that's interesting. Have you ever thought of, so we're framing up. So okay. my friend, Jason, who sold the business mm -hmm. says, I, you know, I'd really like to consult a bit because the problem that I solved with this business is still a massive problem. He just sold a, a cybersecurity business. Um, it's still a massive problem. Oh, that's interesting. So he thinks he wants to consult. He doesn't know yet. So that in my head, I'm thinking that's a cute idea, maybe. So I like, don't say that. Go, why don't you just go try that a little and see how it goes? That's exactly right. What would it look like for you to experiment with it? Well, you know what? What if I, what if I called my buddy, John? Because John does a little bit. Of, oh, interesting. See what you, so now we're frame, narrowing it. Steve goes and does a little bit of consultants like Carl, I hated it. Oh, what else could we try? Yeah. That, and you could do the same thing with retirement. You could do the same thing with somebody who hates their job. Like every single person around any sort of goal, replace that with education funding. We think we want, we got to pay for the kids. Oh, that's interesting. Where did you first come up with that goal? Oh, my parents did it. Is it what you, is it the two, what you two want? How would that look? It's just purely goal clarification. That gives us a sense of direction and we're holding loosely. It's a strong opinion, loosely, loosely held. held. All right. I like that. I like, I do, I do get that, like, that, that sense of direction, that sense of, sense of direction. As you start prompting that conversation, like, well, you know, what, what would you want to do with your time? Is there anything you've, always wanted to try what kind of magazines you read what blogs are you into like just what you know most of us have some some sense of direction thing if only deep down subconscious never talked about it or acknowledged it or framed it or owned it but like it's there we have we have interests it's just i think kind of how brains are wired but often we don't give ourselves permission to pursue it so Let's own what really is there is a sense of direction. Let's let's talk about how you might pursue that. And that that yeah. begins to formulate the sense of direction. It's it's really like a more playful way. And I think it's a more yeah. reality-based way of engaging with the word goals. So we're still going to use the same word. We're still going to yeah. use the same tools, but we're just going to be a little bit more real about it. Yeah. Okay. So I like it. So stop thinking about goals and start thinking about general direction, or I guess how to, how, to, how to better formulate your own general direction or how to help a client formulate their general direction. Yeah, reality-based goals. Reality-based goals. All right, thank you, Carl. <laughs> Cheers, Michael, so fun.